Oh, I'm very excited to be here. This is actually the highlight of my semester since I'm not teaching regularly in my day job um, as an EECS professor anymore. I get to come and give this lecture once a semester. So uh, it is one of the most fun things I do. And, um, and uh, it's always great, though, that Dan introduces me to some new and interesting technology. So we're going to try the new and interesting technology here and hope that everything happens. There's a little green light on. Does that, is that a good? I, I, there. Is it good? It's good. Okay. All right. So, um, yes, I'm going to talk today about all the great things you can co do with computers, um, including a lot of things that we do up at Lawrence Berkeley Lab. Um, by the way, we'd like to emphasize the Berkeley Lab part of Lawrence Berkeley National Lab because, uh, contrary to popular opinion, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab is not in Livermore. It's in Berkeley. So um, just if you walk straight up the hill or Hearst Avenue, keep going past Foothill Housing, and then you kind of wiggle around to the left, you'll see uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, and that's where the uh, um, we're building a new computer facility up there. It's going to be very exciting. So um, I'm going to talk about using computers for um, science and engineering. So why do we use computers in science and engineering? Well, we use them because we have problems that are too big, like you're trying to understand the origins of the universe. And it is too big to just go out and measure the universe, although we do that. We measure all the little pixels in the, in the, um, that we can see from here to try to understand what happened right after the Big Bang. Um, you can actually see a blueprint sort of of, of that um, in the sky. So things that are too small, so really tiny things. I'll talk about molecules, proteins, things like that. Things that move really fast, um, things that move really slow, um, and things that are either too expensive or too dangerous to do. So this is all of the cool things you can do with science. I was actually at a meeting a few weeks ago with a bunch of people from industry and somebody from Procter & Gamble gave a great talk. It's online, by the way. I can give Dan a pointer to it later if you want to see things that are not really, you might not think of as science and engineering. It has to do with how you design products. So this is more of an engineering problem. And computers, believe it or not, in fact, including some of the fastest supercomputers are used for things like uh, designing diapers, designing toilet paper, designing the, the processes, the machines that you, you manufacture them by. So think about this, toilet paper. What do you want the properties of toilet paper? Well, you want it to be soft, but you want it to be strong because you're going to produce it at 40 miles an hour and as it flies off of the, um, the uh, conveyor belt, so you, you, it can't fall apart um, until you want it to. It has to be perforated in certain ways that are just perforated enough that it tears when you want it to, but not when it doesn't. And they use computer simulations to figure that out. They use computer simulations to make diapers uh, you know, feel good uh, to babies, but not feel good for toddlers, so they stop using them. All kinds of great things like that. They're um, used for, for in science for understanding diseases, for under, developing energy efficient devices. Um, and there's a industrial products that looks like soap, bubble, soap, soap bubbles there. So we call simulation um, and computing the third pillar of science. What does this mean? So uh, my kids are still middle school, early high school. They're learning about science. Um, so when you start learning about science, you do things like roll. You learn physics, right? You roll these cars down planes. You measure how long it takes for them to get down a certain ramp of a certain height and, and distance and so on, and learn about F equals MA. What's F equals MA? That's a theory. A theory says, well, we think that this is the way that mass and acceleration and forces are related. Um, and um, so that's a, that's a theory. And then we can run experiments like rolling these cars and stuff like that. Um, and you do these experiments. Well, what do you use simulation for? What you do is you basically implement the theory. So you plug in F and M, for example, and, and get a bunch of accelerations out. Or you can plug, plug, plug in the other two variables and get the third one out. Um, and you you can build much more complicated systems in which you're applying F equals MA to something like um, simulating the forces on diapers. Um, and so you use the computers then for much more complicated systems um, to try to tie together the things you're seeing from experiments and the things that you believe to be true um, based on the theories that you've developed from um, earlier experiments. So um, two, I'll talk about two of the biggest problems that are facing the world today and how we use computers to try to address those kinds of problems. And those two problems, you can just kind of think of what are, what are the world's biggest problems. Well, there are a number of them that you, can, you, can, you might want to address, but two of the big ones are um, the changing world around us, that is the environment, climate change, understanding how the, how the world is changing, um, and what are things that we can do to try to um, reverse climate change. The second category is health and, and medicine. Um, what can we do to try to um, understand the, the um, disease mechanisms and develop better treatments and uh, uh, drugs and things like that? So there's a couple of projects, um, actually several projects up at Berkeley Lab that have to do with the first of these problems, which is understanding um, 
understanding climate change and understanding what we can do about that problem. Uh, the overall project here is called Carbon Cycle 2.0. Um, the, the name Carbon Cycle 2.0 means how can we develop a new sustainable carbon cycle? That is, it may not look exactly like the carbon cycle existed pre-humans, that is before we started with all these forcing functions of the greenhouse gases, but can we get back to another stable cycle in which we're actually kind of re recirculating and recycling the, um, the carbon that's being produced? And there's a whole set of different research problems in the picture of developing a new carbon cycle um, with climate change and understanding climate impacts there in the middle. And all around the outside are things to develop um, new energy efficient devices um, and buildings to have, um, to, and, uh, these are combustion engines looking at ways of capturing carbon and sequestering it underground, developing alternative fuels, solar PVs and things like that. So there's a whole bunch of pieces of the picture and if you listen to the, the um, Secretary of Energy, Steve Chu, who actually used to be in the physics department here at Berkeley and also was the, the um, director of Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, um, he will say that, that the, the solution to the energy problem and the, the global, cli global climate change is not a single one of these things. It's not like biofuels. If we, saw, if we create biofuels, that will solve the problem. It has to be a whole set of things. So we're going to use computing to try to understand that. These images are taken from simulations done at my uh, center that's called NERSC, the National Energy Research Scientific Computing Center. Um, and these are all simulations that are used to try to help uh, address these different parts of the, the um, carbon cycle. So I'm going to start by talking a little bit about climate change um, and this movie. So this is simulating um, the hurricane season. Um, this is research done by a couple of Berkeley Lab scientists, one who is an expert in computer graphics and visualization, and one who is an expert on global climate change. Um, and, and has this is data that's been run by a lot of different researchers um, around the uh, around the country to to simulate these hurricanes. And what you what you see here looks almost like a movie of the climate. Um, but what you're seeing there is actually these these different hurricanes that are um, forming. And these are from computer simulations or computer models of what um, of what the uh, climate looks like in a particular season, a particular hurricane season. 